Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll tell you how to travel to England. Come and watch. England is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. While most travelers tend to stick to London, the rest of the region has a lot to offer and sees a fraction of the crowds. In fact, backpacking around England was one of the highlights of all my travels in Europe. England's smaller cities, like Bath and Oxford, are both fascinating and culturally rich. Liverpool, the birthplace of the Beatles, boasts a rich musical history, while the countryside has fascinating estates and natural beauty. There's the mountainous north, the rolling hills of Lancaster and Cornwall, Stonehenge, Hadrian's Wall, and Tudor cities like Chester. In short, there is a ton to see and do in England. This England travel guide can help you plan your trip, save money, and make the most out of your time here. Top 5 Things to See and Do in England 1. Tour London You can't go to England without visiting London, it's one of the most popular cities in the world. It's home to charming pubs, world-class museums, tons of history, some of the best theater performances in the world, a diverse population, incredible food, and a wild nightlife. It might be a city that often breaks the bank, but fortunately, London has a plethora of free markets, museums are often free, and it has a ton of relaxing parks that you can enjoy on a budget. There are lots of free walking tours here too. 2. Drive the Coast England's coastal towns make for a relaxing holiday. The most popular destination is Brighton, well known for its summer parties and festivals. But don't overlook places like Weymouth, Salcombe, Dover, Hastings, Street Ives, or Newquay, and that's just a handful of them in the south of the country. You could literally spend months just discovering each new place. The towns offer everything from old-world traditional charm to bright lights and fun fairs. 3. See Cornwall Cornwall is like mini New England, you can see why English settlers felt at home in the New World. Just like the USA's New England, Cornwall has rolling hills, beautiful lakes, small towns, rural farms, wonderful hiking trails, tiny fishing villages, great food, and even a winery. The area has been populated since the Neolithic and Bronze Age. Eventually, the Britons claimed the region, with the first written account of the region dating back to the 4th century BC. It's also been an important maritime region for centuries. The laid-back pace of life here is one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite places in England. Don't miss it. 4. Spend a day in Bath. Bath is named after the famous ancient Roman baths, located in the heart of the city, that date back to 70 CE and were in use through to the 5th century. The audio guide by Bill Bryson is a must and adds a lot of context and details. The baths are the main attraction in town, though the abbey, Georgian and Victorian houses, and River are also nice to see. Literature buffs can also explore Jane Austen's heritage, as she lived in Bath for most of her life. 5. Explore the Lake District. Located in Cumbria, in northern England, and about an hour from the border with Scotland, the Lake District is home to one of England's best national parks. 
The lakes in the region are a result of the last ice age, and receding glaciers cut the U-shaped valleys that are now filled with water. It's perfect for hiking mountain passes and sailing around pristine lakes. It's very popular during the summer. It is to northern England what Cornwall is to the south, a natural, rural paradise that embodies the best of England, and, outside of Cornwall, it's my favorite region in England. Other things to see and do in England. 1. See Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace, home to the Queen of England, is a fascinating site that's only open to the public during the summer. If you can't or don't want to visit the palace, you can catch the changing of the guards at 11 a.m. four times a week. If you want to check out the palace, admission is 30 GBP when purchased online, while exclusive guided tours are 90 GBP. Check the Royal Collection Trust website for details on other events happening throughout the year. Two, visit the Tower of London. Built in 1070, the Tower of London has expanded many times over the years. It was built as a double leaf bascule bridge in the middle to maintain river access to the Pool of London docks while easing congestion on each side of the river. You can visit inside the tower and walk along the glass walkways. Weapons, armor, and coins were made here until 1810, and today, you can view the famous crown jewels, walk the battlements, wander recreated medieval palace rooms, see the iconic yeoman warders, and spot the legendary black ravens that live in the tower. Skip the line tickets are 29.9 GBP. Be aware that lines are long, so it's best to plan ahead. Three, relax in Brighton. Brighton is a great little seaside resort town on the southern coast of England that's perfect for a weekend getaway. Considered the hippest city in the UK, Brighton is known for being quirky, bohemian, artsy, and very locked queue friendly. It's a popular summer destination for locals who come here to relax on the beach, enjoy the fleeting summer sun, and wander the pier where there are amusement rides, carnival-style stalls, and street food. Four, listen to music in Liverpool. Liverpool has spectacular museums, but as the world capital city of pop, the real reason to go is for the music, or more specifically, for the Beatles. The Beatles Story Museum has all kinds of memorabilia and information about the famous band, who were from Liverpool. Besides the music, Liverpool has a rich history and culture as well as fun pubs, so don't sell it short. 5. Check out Chatsworth House. Located in Derbyshire, this massive and lavish mansion was built in 1549 for the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. While there are many beautiful houses and castles throughout the UK, this is one of the most astonishing. It's so striking in fact, that countless films and TV series have been filmed here. The home has played a role in popular culture since it was mentioned in Jane Austen's book, Pride and Prejudice in 1813. On your visit, you can wander the 25 stately rooms, stroll the 105-acre gardens, and make new furry friends in the operating farmyard. Admission to the house and garden costs 26 GBP.
6. Tor Oxford University Founded in the 11th century in Oxford, this university is one of the oldest in the world. You can visit the many beautiful colleges within Oxford for just a few dollars, or you can take a 90120-minute guided tour of the entire university with Bodleian libraries. You can even see the colleges in which they filmed parts of Harry Potter. For art history buffs, stop in at the Free Ashmolene Museum on campus for impressive Eastern and ancient Egyptian art collections. Seven, attend the festivals. England is known for its festivals, especially during the summer. For music, be sure to check out the famous Glastonbury Festival or the Liverpool International Music Festival. Also, the UK has three huge annual Pride events in London, Brighton, and Manchester. This is just the tip of the festival iceberg though, as every city and town has a lot on offer. 8. See Stonehenge. Stonehenge, located just 15 minutes from Salisbury, is one of the oldest man-made structures in the world. You can't go up to the stones anymore, but it's quite a fascinating sight, especially since we still have very little idea how they drag the stones there. The audio tour is worth getting so you can get some historical context on the site. Admission starts at 22 GBP. 9. Visit Old Trafford. I highly recommend a visit to Manchester United's home stadium. With over 74,000 seats, it is the largest club football stadium in the UK and the 11th largest in all of Europe. The tour is awesome and takes you below the stadium seating into the players' lounge and even into the pitch side dugout. Dig deeper into some football history at the on-site museum. Admission is 35 GBP. 10. Admire Eli Cathedral, also known as the Ship of the Fens. This cathedral is visible everywhere in the small city of Eli in Cambridgeshire. Originally built in the 12th century, it's renowned for its Romanesque architecture, complete with a stunning entrance and an octagonal lantern tower. The Lady Chapel is the largest in all of England. The cathedral is also home to the National Stained Glass Museum, whose collection spans 800 years and includes stained glass from across the UK and Europe. Visiting the cathedral only costs 9 GBP. Entry to the museum is 5 GBP. Booking in advance is recommended if you want to join one of the tours which cost between 1.5 minus 12 GBP. Eleven, relax in Greenwich Park. Considered to be one of London's largest parks, it is also one of the most beautiful and a perfect escape from the city's bustle. There are several historic sites here, as well as a rose garden, meandering pathways, a tea house, the Royal Observatory, the National Maritime Museum, a calf, and even a deer park. It is the oldest enclosed royal park in London and a relaxing place to spend a few hours with a book. Twelve, Hike Hadrian's Wall, declared a World Heritage Site in 1987. Hadrian's Wall has been standing since the second century. It was built by the Romans to keep the Celts out of Roman England. While you can make a brief visit to see the fortifications and ancient walls in many spots of the country, if you're up for it, you can also hike the entire 83-mile length of the wall itself. 13. Go to Salisbury. Not far from Stonehenge is the beautiful town of Salisbury. Just 1.5 hours from London by train, 
It has a breathtaking 750-year-old cathedral that is home to the Magna Carta and tombs, dating back to 1099. Salisbury is one of the few places that wasn't bombed during the World War II Blitz, so it is beautifully preserved. Cathedral Close and Market Square are both worth visiting in Salisbury, as well as Old Sarum and Salisbury Museum. 14. Stay in Chester. I love an undervisited destination, and for me, Chester is one of those places. Chester's center looks like something out of an old novel by Charles Dickens. The homes in Chester are typically Victorian in design, and the old taverns, hotels, and little shops all have retained their charm and original look. There's plenty to do in Chester, including walking along the city walls and seeing the rows of medieval houses that showcase the historic architecture. Chester Cathedral is over 1,000 years old, and well worth a visit. For something a little more contemporary, go on a river cruise. Fifteen. Visit the colleges at Cambridge University. Like Oxford, Cambridge University is made up of different colleges. Founded in 1209, the university is an architectural delight and wandering around the many buildings in the city. Most notable include the stunning buildings at King's and Queen's Colleges, as well as the iconic quads at Steeti, John's, and Trinity. 16. There are lots of walking tours to choose from if you want to learn more about Cambridge's history, and some are even led by the students themselves. Expect tours to last around 90 minutes and cost 20 GBP. 16. Enjoy afternoon tea. Tea is a scene unto itself in England. With a history dating back through the centuries, this tradition can be enjoyed at every level of your budget. Starting with just the drink, you can find quaint tea shops literally all over the country. 17. There you can try different types of tea and a selection of cakes to go with it. Should you need a sweet treat? In Devon and Cornwall, you can have cream tea, which is tea with scones, cream, and jam. Afternoon tea, or high tea, is a more lengthy affair and comes first with finger sandwiches and tiny savory pastries, then with scones and little cakes. Some places offer a glass of champagne to go with it. Most traditional tea houses offer afternoon tea, but if you're after more of a sense of occasion and your budget can stretch to it, the big hotels also offer it every day. 17. Visit Bristol. Many people only pass through Bristol on their way to Bath, but it's really worth a visit of its own. With a population of 500,000, Bristol is a hip college town with amazing eateries, great food, wonderful things to see, lots of green space, and plenty of things to do. 18. Aside from taking a walking tour, some of my favorite things to do include a tour of Bristol's Romanesque Cathedral that was built in 1148, wandering King Street, and admiring Clifton Suspension Bridge. 19. Bristol has a great museum and art gallery that is worth a visit, and I also really enjoyed Steeti. Nicholas Market. Other things worth doing include the S. Great Britain, the Avon Railway, and Blaise Castle. 20. When to go to England? Thanks to its temperate climate, 
Visiting England year-round is enjoyable, as there are very few weather extremes. Summer is peak tourism season, and temperatures are the warmest during this time, but rarely are they ever above 30 C. Although tourist sites and attractions are teeming with people, there's also a great atmosphere in the air. People make the most of the warm weather, and there are tons of events and festivals happening all over the country. Spring and autumn are also fantastic times to visit, as temperatures are still warm and the crowds are a bit thinner. Plus, with the seasons changing, you either see gorgeous spring flowers in bloom or the leaves turning color in autumn. Just be prepared for a little rain. Winter lasts from December to February, and tourism crowds thin out dramatically. You can still do plenty of sightseeing, although further north some attractions may be closed for the season. Temperatures dip below 5C, so dress warmly. Snow is not uncommon. Keep in mind that England is famous for its gloomy, dreary weather. It can rain a lot, so make sure you pack some weather clothes and some waterproof gear no matter when you visit. I truly hope you found this England travel guide helpful in planning your upcoming adventures. Don't hesitate to drop any questions in the comments. Thank you very much.